As probably most people know, there's a lot of energy that comes out of the sun, thousands and thousands and thousands of times more than we need. And we know how to use the sun's energy in a number of ways. We can try to convert it uh, directly into electricity. And that way of using the sun's energy is uh, called solar photovoltaics, um, or solar cells for short. Solar cells are materials that can take the energy that comes in from the sun in the form of photons and convert the, those photons and that energy into a different kind of energy, which is electricity. So it's converting photons into electrons. You can think of it like the electrons are being pushed up a hill in a way. Think, think about water. You, you pump water up a hill and you let it roll back down. And as it rolls back down, you can turn something, you can do work, right? And so, you know, and, and if you keep it up there, then it stores the energy for you until you want it. Now, a solar cell doesn't store the energy. So for that, you need a battery. But what a solar cell does is it's constantly pumping, right? It's constantly pumping that water up the hill and allowing it to flow back down. And the important thing is that the pump here is the sun and the water is electricity, right? It's electrons. And so as that flows back down from the energy that pumped it, from the sun's energy it flows back down, we can do work. So first of all, you have the active layer semiconductor, and then that has to contact metals. So you, you have sort of two metals on two different sides of this, of this material. One of them is on the side that the sun is shining through. So you'd like that to either not take up a lot of area or to be transparent even, right? So that it's not blocking the light from the active layer. Now, once you go out from the active layer and the metal contacts, then you have the packaging. And the way that we do that mostly today is with glass. So this active layer material that's that's absorbing sunlight, if you look at this material from the point of view of the electron, what it looks like is that there are there are all these energies that I can sit at as an electron, okay, in the material. And then there's this big sort of gap where I can't go anywhere in that gap. And that top, before I get to that gap, is called the valence band. That's the, the highest energy level I can be at in this, um, in this material. And then the next level up above this gap is called the conduction band. To be an electron that can be taken out of the material, I have to make my way into that conduction band. There. How do I put it up there? I give it a boost in energy that makes it overcome that gap. You can imagine that what that means is that, um, as a minimum, the energy from the sun that I have to have to, to generate electricity with this solar cell is going to be equal to that gap. That gap is a fundamental property of materials. So the main limitation is cost. On average, it's, it's around a factor of five more expensive than, say, the electricity you get from natural gas. There's another challenge, and that's storage. So if we wanted, say, um, up to 10% of the electricity in this country to come from solar PV, we could do that. If we want it to be more than that, then we're going to need to figure out a way to store that energy efficiently at that large of a scale. There's a lot of interest in getting off of glass because if you can get off of glass, then you can make lighter panels. We may be able to embed solar cells into other materials, like into the tiles on your roof, for example, even into fabric. They have these transparent uh, solar cells. So because they're transparent, they're not that efficient. You think, why would I want a transparent, not that efficient solar cell? Well, you know, they have a demonstration where you put one of their solar cells on top of an Amazon Kindle. You basically can't tell that it's there but the Kindle never needs to be plugged in again. Even from just ambient light from the room, that's enough uh, to basically keep it charged always. I think we need to get solar into people's hands and into people's products so that they can see that it's actually not complicated um, and it, it can uh, be very useful and ultimately it, it can do a lot of good for the world.